Hey guys, welcome to my Mono for 2 Remastered video. I'll be covering every single level and different strats and things going through. There'll be another video explaining more advanced strats, which will definitely not extend past this video's length as it'll be extremely simplified as I'm not covering as much information. There will be a guide for strafing and other movement key features. However, I just want to mention that in the description, there is a speed Excel spreadsheet that will tell you the different speeds and throughout the whole game, I am using the M4 with the new tube or a pistol. If you do not have access to either of those, you want to use a shotgun or L LMG. A few extra notes I would like to add is I'm not a peer expert and I do make mistakes. So if I have made a mistake and you can correct me, please just message me and I'll either put it in the description or make a new video covering all the things I've had done wrong within the video. Also, if there's another Call of Duty game that you guys are interested in seeing made into a guide, just let me know. I do know most of the Call of Duty Modern Warfare games, but I also know some of the Black Ops games as well, and I could definitely make a guide exactly like this for them. I do plan on making a Modern Warfare Remastered guide and a Modern Warfare 2019 guide, so if you're hoping to run those, I will make a guide for them as well. Throughout most of this video, you will receive the basic guidelines and how to actually do each level individually. There are a lot of levels that are just repetitive compared to one another and there isn't many differences between some of the levels besides just waiting and hoping the uh, RNG for the AI lines up for your run. Getting started, to explain SSDD, it's very simplified. The very first two or three minutes is just really listening to Foley. Just make sure you throw the grenade as soon as possible and you'll be fine. Entering the downstairs section of SSDD, which leads into the pit, you want to make sure to grab the pistol on the table, as a lot of newer runners forget that that's actually a thing and it is mandatory. In this tutorial, I will be covering my pit strat. Many other runners have different ways they do it, and I'll be linking how Kluger does his, if you want to do it how he does. That link will be in the description. So this is the easy route without doing the hard method. So you just basically wait for Dunn to get up, and you can grab the MP9K and the pistol. This is actually the fastest method for for the pit. To save a little bit of time, you want to switch back to the M4 after grabbing the pistol as it skips a couple of voice lines from Dunn telling you to switch over. The way I do pit is very simple. I hit the first two targets in a the lineup, then I hit the two right directly after that, and I try to go for a three target lineup. If that doesn't work, I still hit all of those three targets, and then I hit two more, one on top of the building and one that's in my way going through the window, and then I hit the two inside the building and then the four on top of the roof. Before you jump down, you want to make sure you hit at least 12 targets as 18 is the minimum and there's six on the bottom section but because of my route you should have at least 15 so once you're down at the bottom you want to hit at least three more targets and you completed the pit as simple as you can <laughs> I had wanted to point this out directly, but before you reach the top of the stairs, you want to switch to your pistol as the knifing animation is faster than the animation with the MP5K. Very impressive, man. You made that court. 
The hard pit route is actually very simple. All you have to do is jump on top of these sandbags and line up with the crease between two of these sandbags. Here's a photo on screen to show you what I'm talking about. And you want to just run, jump, and strafe to the right, and you will end up on the pole. It takes a lot of practice, but after getting it multiple times, you'll regain the muscle memory to do it repetitively. If you still have problems, there's a more advanced guide in the description below made by Kluger. Once you actually do the skip, it is following the exact same route as we do for the easy route. However, we use just the deagle as the m4 is slower because it decreases movement speed by a huge chunk compared to just running with the deagle so once you're inside the building you want to reload and then continue on a lot of more experienced runners can do this whole section without having a lot of struggle so i would recommend practicing with the deagle to get more used to it however it's not majorly needed and you can get through it a lot of easier after finishing the pit you want to select the difficulty that you want to run on and run to the top of the stairs it's actually very mandatory for you to reach the top of the stairs for the rest of the audio to play out and that would conclude the tutorial for SSDD. At the start of the team player, it's actually majorly based off of waiting. You have to wait for a certain dialogue to happen. It's about two minutes within the level, but it is very like a tedious time to sit there and wait. During this time, I'm actually lining up to do a new tube shot to protect the bridge layer. If you kill them instantly, the bridge layer actually lays down the whole bridge faster as it's based off of the first enemy killed. This lineup it was found by Kluger and I'll link down a video where he shows that a little bit better but you can just see the basic guidelines. But overall you want to go to the, the right of the dumpster and crouch and then line up your crosshair just a little bit below the sign. I'll zoom it in and put some red lines there for you to be able to see. During this waiting period you want to wait for the voice line by Devil11 talking about the 1-5 Mike's holding at 3 Sierra Northwest. During this section, you want to shoot around the time he gets done saying Mike's and start saying holding. Once you shoot the noob tube, you just want to go to the bottom of the stairs and wait for them to move. If you wait just a little bit after they start going up, you can run up the right side and save some time. Once you're in the truck, you kind of shit out of luck because it's basically just a side scroller. So we're just going to fast forward until it's important to do something. Once reaching the second truck, it's actually mandatory to shoot both players, unlike in Modern Warfare 2, where you only had to shoot one. Once entering the building after the truck explodes, you, there's two different routes you can take. Both are extremely similar, as this is a very linear level, but it's just basically strats that you do. I'll be showing the hard strat and the easy strat. There's not really much of a difference between the two, just one you run through without really shooting, and the second one you use a noob tube for. The hard shot's just really running by the enemies without actually shooting them, which it takes a lot of time to actually practice and get really used to doing, and a lot of time you will get meleeed. Within this game, getting meleeed is a one-shot, one-kill in certain situations, so this section's really hard for certain people to get through without dying. The specific route I took is the fastest, where you go between both rooms instead of going down the corridor and to the right. You want to pay a lot of attention towards the very end where you run by that one dude that's getting shot. He can still melee you and kill you. Once reaching the end, you want to run to this far left corner and lay down. It actually stops the rest of Shepard's dialogue. It's still a little bit untested, but it does save a little bit of time instead of letting him speak. And this will conclude the end of team player. So the start of Cliffhanger is actually a slow process and it takes a lot of time because you can't really do anything to fast forward or skip it and it's just a huge waste of time. But I'm going to fill in this little 
bit by trying to reinforce the statement that you need to try to learn strafing and this game's actually extremely friendly for console runners where you can strafe way easier on this version of modern warfare 2. all it takes is a little bit of practice and if you've gotten this far i'm pretty sure you have the intent of actually speed running the game This is a small time save, but I want to point it out, when jumping over the first ice slick, you want to sit there and switch to your pistol as it increases your strafing speed. I would extremely practice strafing during this whole section as it's completely based off of how you move. There is a small little stretch where there's multiple enemies all at once. You can stop and shoot them, but you can generally run past them. I got an extremely lucky spawn where they all were still to the right, but sometimes they are more spread out and it gets harder to go in between them like I did here. Once entering the building, you want to go to the right of McTavish and knife the guy. He actually has a very long animation where he knifes him himself and kills him. But if you do it, the the intel on top of the building will spawn in faster for you to grab it. I want to point out a mistake I made. You saw that once I went around the corner, I tried to do a strafe, but it ended up landing on top of the table. You want to be extremely careful in certain situations like this, and especially in this part of the building, where you don't want to start strafing unless you actually have the ability to do it in a straight line. After grabbing the intel, you have to go back into the building where McTavish is being held captive. You jump on top of the blue barrel, and once you click the button, you want to jump down and land. While falling, you want to shoot him and then land, and you want to strafe all the way towards the end of the level where you grab the snowmobile. Once you jump down the hill, you actually want to get on top of the house and shoot the people on the left side to get an easy lineup and then the right person, and then the other... Other people who are riding snowmobiles will come around the corner. You want to shoot them and wait. There is this red one that you want to shoot specifically, which is the one that McTavish is supposed to be riding on. Once on the snowmobile, there are two routes you can take. One where you go in between certain amount of trees or the one where you go right. The going in between one is actually faster, but it is way riskier. And I accidentally hit a tree, and I kind of want to use this as an example of you need to practice certain levels more than others, as certain things are harder to pick up instantly. And that more experienced runners still make mistakes, so... Don't be so harsh on yourself if you make a minor mistake like this. No Russian is a level that has a major amount of complications that even a lot of experienced runners have a lot of problems with, and that's the end of the level. 
the first part of takedown is just riding in a car waiting for you to gain the ability to do anything. You want to make sure you lay down as some runners accidentally forget to do that. There are two ways to actually finish the level. One where you shoot through the wall called Hotel Skip and one where you run down the street and shoot him. Here's a timestamp on screen to show how to do the wall bang if you want to skip ahead. Coach, a driver's dead, but on foot. Meet us at the Hotel Rio and cut him off if you can. Roger, I'm on my way. To explain the slow route, it's actually a very simple thing and it doesn't lose too much time compared to the fast route. All you do is switch to the shotgun, run down the street, and before he turns the final corner, you want to switch to the gun and shoot him in the leg. This is actually very simple and if he can't get down the, the hard route, this is a very simple alternative and it doesn't lose too much time. Coach, a driver's dead, but on foot, meet us at the hotel. So to explain the hard route, there's actually a very specific spot you want to aim and shoot down. This is actually more commonly missed in newer runners because of the fact that, that they don't actually practice the skip multiple times. So the main spot you want to aim is right at the very base of the pole and to the right. You actually have a lot of breathing room during this whole section, but you want to make sure to actually hit the shot. I would highly recommend having the hit marker effect on, as it actually will let you know if you hit him, and if it comes up red, that means you fatally wounded him, and you want to reload the last checkpoint. After this, it's really based off of just strafing and knowing the specific route. I know I am fast forwarding this bit, but it's actually very simple, and if you played the game, you follow the exact route that the game makes you take, as it's extremely linearly. The only major change is once you reach the top of the staircase, you want to turn around and face away from the informant being tackled down. This is because there's a slow-mo section, if you turn around, it won't actually give you that slow-mo, and it'll save some time. And all you just want to make sure is just to don't die, and finish the level, and that would be the end of uh, Takedown. Entering Wolverines, overall the very beginning is just based off of strafing, but the whole level actually is an extremely painful task and it's super hard to actually get a good manipulation. Once reaching this point of Wolverines, it's super imperative you don't actually kill anybody because of the fact that, that killing them can actually mess up the manipulation during the whole level and you want to make sure not to actually shoot them. So the best strat is just wounding one in the leg or doing what I do and just running past them. Once reaching the top of the building, this is where it's imperative that you didn't kill any enemies, as there's two spawn areas for these trucks. There's the north side trucks and the east side trucks. The east side trucks spawn first, and they are based off of how en many enemies you have killed. So if you kill zero enemies, there's going to be a very minimal amount of enemies that spawn on the east side trucks. And once those east side trucks have a s less than a certain value of enemies, the north side trucks will spawn in. So if you don't kill any of them, like we had stated earlier, the east side trucks should spawn in instantly like it does in the video. If they do somehow not spawn, you just want to pick up the thermal weapon and start shooting off them on the east side, and once you get that done, the north side should spawn in. Heads up ladies, we got trucks to the south. Incoming, north side! Roger that! After placing the turret, you want to run to the other side of the map to go inside the restaurant where the rocket is. You kind of just have to wait for it to spawn in to be able to use it. During this time, we pick up the AK-47 and the MG. This is really just for saving time killing the people inside of the Burger Town restaurant. You actually see me make a mistake where I pulled out the rocket again to make sure I killed all the BTRs. It is better to actually shoot them down and make sure you got them down instead of just running to the, the next section and going back and making sure they're dead. After killing all the people in Burger Town, you want to go back to the restaurant that had the UAV in it. You want to go in the back side just in case and kill everybody that's around there. And then you want to use the UAV to kill the people that spawn in on the road on the back end of Burger Town. After doing that, you want to jump inside the building and grab the rocket launcher. And then once you have it, you want to run to the bus stop and wait for Foley to reach the... Burger Town Restaurant. Once that happens, you want to pull the UAV out and start picking off the groups of enemies that spawn on the left side and the right side of the map. For the left side, you want to generally aim where the tree is 
and for the right side you want to aim on the corner if you don't kill all of them you want to pull the rocket out again and make sure you kill them as if you don't they won't spawn in the helicopters right away we actually do this because if you don't do it correctly there'll be another group of enemies that spawn and you have to kill them but if you see here we did it correctly and they'll spawn in the left side and we can instantly kill them off instead of the right side where you actually have to pick them off from a distance as they spawn too far away to run all the way over to them predator drone is offline Butter 2-1 this is overlord we got a visual on a pair of enemy attack helicopters headed for your area after shooting the rocket to hit the helicopter, you want to hit the switch weapons button twice and it'll actually keep the rocket in your hands. This will save a huge amount of time instead of having to climb the next building over. After shooting the final rocket, you want to turn around and go to the back of the map and wait for the trucks to come in. Just make sure not to stand to the right of the fire truck as you can die and I take a huge amount of damage you can see. And this will conclude the tutorial for uh, Wolverine. Okay, the whole level of Hornet's Nest is actually very similar to Takedown, where it's just readily based off of strafe movement with little to difference based off of how you play it. Once you reach the top of the stairs, you want to just shoot the guy and continue on. We take a left turn here, but sometimes it's actually more dangerous too, so you can continue on like regularly. You want to be extremely careful inside the marketplace as it has a huge possibility of being meleeed at. Once reaching where Soap is standing, you want to just shoot at his feet so he doesn't actually go through the door and block you. Be ready for immediate dust off. Once exiting the building, you want to jump on top of the wooden pallet and then kill the people on top of the building. In the original game, you had to wait for the door to open to jump on top and then continue, but in this version, they made the metal sheets a solid entity so you can actually jump on top of them and save a little bit of time. Once reaching the helicopter, you want to wait for Nikolai to say his voice line. Once he actually says it, you can jump down. This saves a lot of time as you don't have to get the animation for trying to stay on top of the roof. And this will conclude the tutorial for Hornet's Nest. It's actually a very simple level, but it can lose a lot of time if you do it incorrectly. It, sadly to say, Exodius is a very bland level and it doesn't actually have a lot of stuff to do in it. It's really just running to the end of the level and making sure you shoot down the turret before running past it. Most of the level is really just waiting for Foley to run to the final house and the only other difference is shooting just the left side anti-aircraft guns. That's the most time save here is based off of how early you shoot them, but besides that, that's just how Exodus is and that's the whole level. I usually don't ask people to subscribe, but because this video actually took a huge amount of time to make and i know that we're only halfway through the game but this is your friendly reminder if you can please subscribe The level, the only easy day was yesterday, would arguably be one of the harder missions to be able to do, just because of the fact that it's such a tight space and there's a lot of enemies that spawn in, but there is a little bit of manipulation that you can do. Once actually reaching the part where you knife the guy, you want to turn around and shoot the guy on top, because it saves a lot of time, because if you get up there and shoot him, you have to wait for Ghost to say his voice line saying that it's all clear. Alpha, moving up to section 2. Roger that, Hotel 6. We're clear. Civilian hostages at your position. Watch your fire. Roger that. Team 1 moving to bridge. Within this tutorial, we haven't actually talked about breaches, and there's a special thing you can do during them. If you weapon swap twice like we did in Wolverines, it actually play through the slow motion faster and make it super easy to not lose a huge amount of time. For this first breach, you just want to shoot the dude on the left that's about to kill the hostage. After this, you want to run up and get into the second breach. For this breach, you want to do the weapon swap as well. I just want to reinforce the fact that every for every breach that's in the game, you want to do a weapon swap. The levels that have them are this one, Gulag, Loose Ends, and J-Lot. All of these levels have breaches, and you want to do this for each breach. It saves a lot of time over the game, and you want to make sure to do it. <laughs> Hold deck two hostages secured. 
So for the rest of the level, it's really based off of many things. At this first part, if you don't kill anybody, they won't actually spawn later on in the level. However, I actually decided to kill them as I didn't want to lose a huge amount of time trying to not go around them. In the second part, I use a noob tube and flashbangs to get through them. And then the third part, I really just spray them and run upstairs. Once reaching upstairs, you want to actually kill everybody as fast as you can because it lets you breach the door instantly. What we usually do is we noob tube to the right and then kill the people to the left and lets you breach you might even get lucky where the people on the left don't run up and you can breach instantly by just killing people on the right after doing the breach, I wait inside the room a little bit to see if soap will come through. If not, then you still want to wait like 5 to 10 seconds because once he gets to the helicopter, he'll just teleport into it. And this will conclude the tutorial for the only easy day was yesterday. Entering Gulag, there's a helicopter section which is super tedious. All you have to do is really just hit the guys on top of the roof. In certain sections, you can actually start shooting the guys on the right earlier to save some time, but overall you can't lose a huge amount of time here unless you just have really poor aim. Getting off the helicopter, you want to make sure that you kill all the enemies in the first section, as it saves a lot of time for Soap to just run by and not actually have to stop and shoot people. You want to continuously run downstairs after killing all the people in the upper section. After killing everyone upstairs and downstairs, you want to actually run backwards and wait for Soap to get all the way downstairs. This is a new skip that was found by by the community you all back. It's actually very simple to pull off and it saves about 5 seconds. All you want to do is just run backwards and wait for the voice line Roger standby and after that you want to run forward until the next door opens. <laughs> The whole section in the armory is really just killing people when they spawn in and just waiting for the door to open. There's not really much you can really do differently, but I do sit here and pick up a shotgun and, and keep one new tube at least just in case I need to use it later on in the level. During this section, you just want to kill everybody to make sure you can have the ability to breach into the wall. Make sure you do the double swap so you drop faster and don't lose too much time on the slow-mo. For the rest of the level, it's pretty plain and simple. During inside the bathroom, you can really do whatever you want, as long as you just don't die. I use a flashbang and run through, or I just run through normally. A lot of other runners just save a noob tube and use it for this section, but I don't really have a problem with just running through. And this will conclude the tutorial for Gulag.
The level of their own accord is actually very simple, like many other levels for Mod Warfare. The only major thing you have to focus on is killing enemies. During this section, it's super changed where you have to kill a lot of enemies for Foley to not actually get stuck. But if you see, I just run through and kill enemies as I go. You don't have to kill all of them, but you want to kill a good portion of them so he doesn't get stuck. Once reaching the upstairs section, you want to make sure to kill everyone within that little area so he walks straight through and jump onto the sniper. You just want to take out as many people as you can. Once you actually get it through, you kind of have to wait until the next objective pops up talking about what to do next. During this time, we place claymores down so it blows up the enemies the moment they spawn. This is actually very important and it saves a huge amount of time, so make sure to place the claymores. I just generally put them in different corners and it always works out. For the javelin section, all you want to do is just shoot two tanks and then a helicopter. The helicopter actually makes the rocket not go straight vertical up and down. It kind of does like a in formation and it saves a little bit of time. If you can, you can use two helicopters, but a lot of people just aim for the two tanks as they're always there and you can lock on instantly. Here is one of the very few soft locks in the game. This one is if you go past this broken wall before the timer on screen appears. If you do go past it before the timer appears, it will soft lock you. So make sure don't pass this until the timer on screen has appeared. After this, all you have to really do is just wait for the helicopter section to finish and that's the end of the level. There isn't really much you can do outside of just killing people and it's very straightforward. So you shouldn't have a huge amount of time struggling with a cord. So entering contingency, what you want to do is kill all the people on the right and try to find a AK-47 with a noob tube. If you actually find one, that's great. If not, don't worry about it. Just go to the bridge. You want to kill everybody on the bridge but one, because if there's one still alive, Price will move up as fast as he can and continuously follow you. You really want to make sure you stick to the far right going through the snow section after being spotted by the BTRs. If not, you will die from the tree falling on you, so make sure you go as far right there as you can. During the next section, it's really important that you kill everybody as Price will just walk through instead of having to stop and shoot. I use the UAV to kill the first section group on the left and then I just spray and pray at the people at the right. After this, you want to make sure you have the UAV rocket one more time so you can hit the corner and take out the helicopter and the other BTR at the same time, which saves a little bit of time. Going into this next section, you want to make sure you stay away from the trucks on the right because they can explode and a lot of newer runners don't acknowledge that and they run straight into that section and explode. After this you just want to wait for Price to get into the submarine and wait for the trucks to spawn in. Once they actually spawn in you want to use the UAV rocket or the RPG to take them out. I just use the UAV for the left ones and then after you take out them you want to run to the next group of, of trucks and take them out as well. Once you killed all of them you just want to run away as far as you can as it cuts off voice lines and you know that you finish the level once Price is good one final time and the rocket takes off. And that will conclude the tutorial for contingency. Second Sun is one of the worst levels where there's not any major skips and it's really just fast forward gameplay where you have to sit and wait for Foley to reach the next section for you to be able to go into the next building. There isn't a lot to note for this level and it's really just based off of waiting. The only thing you can majorly do is once you reach the inside of the building where the private is standing inside, you can shoot a noob tube through the window to kill people or you can just shoot through and that's what we usually do to free up some extra space. The only thing majorly worth noting is you want to use a noob tube 
in the next door opening to kill all the people inside. If not, you will have a very great chance of being meleeed. And this is one of the only Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 levels where the checkpoint system is actually trash. Once you reach this part to outside, you want to kill everybody until you hear the voice line street clear. This is just making sure that the teammates don't get stopped heading downstairs. If you did this whole level right, Dunn should teleport to the end and open the door. And this will conclude the tutorial for Second Son. Whiskey Hotel is one of these levels where it's extremely hard and a lot of players have problems with it even though it's an extremely short level. So the major thing you want to remember is while playing Second Sun you want to keep a noob tube as it'll help clear out the people underneath the White House banister. Once you're reaching under the banister you just want to wait about 50 seconds or if you have, have music on just wait for the music to start playing as this will let fully teleport and not lose a lot of time. Entering the next section you really want to have a noob tube as there's a huge amount of enemies that spawn in. If you don't have a noob tube, you can use a P90 or any fast gun, and you want to make it to it at least the next door as that will kill all the enemies. I had actually played it safe in this part, a lot of runners just run to the right and go towards the podium. What I did was went left and tried to stay away from being meleeed. This section is a huge pain in the ass and I do recommend practicing it. And this would conclude the Whiskey Hotel tutorial. Basically after this all you have to do is just run all the way upstairs and light the flare. Just make sure you don't die and that's really it. Loose Ends is really just a waiting game as most of it is spent waiting for the DSMR to finish. It is not really manipulable and all you have to do is just really kill people during the whole section of it. For this first part, once you reach the part where the landmines come up, you want to throw a flashbang as it gives you control faster. Make sure you do the double weapon swap in this section, and for most of the breaches, there's a lot of manipulation you can do, but because this is more of a simplified guide, just do the two upstairs and then do the two downstairs in the basement, and you should be good. For the rest of the level, I'm basically just fast forwarding because the whole DSMR thing's a five minute winning spree. You can't really lose too much time, just make sure you kill people and you'll do fine.
basically after doing all this and reaching the final section, this will be conclude the end of Loose Ends. Jesus Christ, what a mission. What are they doing? They're not they're not gonna kill us, no way. Ghost is not They're not gonna kill us. He's not dead. <laughs> he's not Oh he's not dead. No <laughs> No 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 what What are they doing? Don't do it, Shepard, don't <laughs> Don't do it, Shepard. There is a common theme for a lot of these levels, and Enemy of My Enemy is one of them, where it's literally just based off of strafing. So I guess this is the final time I'm going to really state it. You want to learn strafing, even on console, it is still viable. So this whole level is based off of strafing. Once you reach the crashed airplane and you slide down, I usually aim super far right so you don't get blocked by the boxes or the barrel. And after that, you just run to the truck and it's the end of the level. So that ends the tutorial for Enemy of My Enemy. Jailot is one of these levels where it actually is a pain in the ass, even for higher level players where it is consistently just a time loss. So if you're getting into this game, Jailot is one of the levels you want to practice more and more of compared to many other levels. In this first section, I usually throw a grenade down and then shoot everybody. If you get lucky, a Scar H will spawn and it will have a noob too, but it's very rare, it's like a 1 in 8 chance. Entering this section, the first thing you want to do is get spotted. You usually just do it by shooting the first guy but not fully killing him. The reason we get spotted is if you don't, the doors won't actually breach at the end and you'll be stuck until you run back and get spotted. Once you reach this part, you want to look down and it kills all the enemies or even doesn't spawn them in. We don't really know why, but it's probably to do something with the enemies not spawning in because you're not in the direct visual contact of them. This is where a lot of people struggle with, and I would definitely recommend retrying this section multiple times by resetting from last checkpoint, just so you can continuously throw yourself at it until you get it consistent enough. Once reaching the final section after going through the scaffolding, you can kill all the enemies at the very far side and actually get the breach super early, but I didn't because I kept uh, reloading while trying to breach. If you don't do that and actually get the breach in time, you save a lot of time, but if not, you just want to try to keep the enemies as far back by throwing grenades and shooting. And and hoping you can get the breach early if not even then you still have to sit there and kill them which you can lose some amount of time here and this will conclude the tutorial for j -Lot. Endgame is one of the more easier levels and there's not a lot that you can do. I would say definitely just learn the route where you just stick to the left wall the whole section on the boat. After doing all of that, at the very end all you want to do is just wiggle back and forth while chasing Shep Shepard. Basically the rest of the level is just doing the game normally. Whenever you have to pull the knife out of your stomach, that's the only part you really want to spam but outside of this the level is over and this would conclude the tutorial for Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. I hope you guys enjoyed and this tutorial had helped you some in learning Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. There will be a more complicated guide later on, hopefully in about a week or two. In that guide I'll be covering more advanced things like a gulag skip that I didn't cover or 
how to manipulate loose ends for more consistent players. However, that will be later on, and this is the baseline for how to actually speedrun the game. I hope this guide helped you at all, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me on the comment section or on my Discord. All the links and resources I used to make this tutorial will be linked down in the description. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please like and subscribe.